Welcome to the Dumb Dad Podcast. My name is Evan, and I'm a dumb dad. Hey, everybody. My name is Kevin, and I'm a dumb dad. Hey, cheers, pal. Cheers, buddy. Boy, I tell you what. We spent the weekend away from each other, mm-hmm. and it was hard for me. Was it? Well, I just missed you a lot. Oh, that's really nice. Um, but yeah, we spent the weekend away from each other. I we mean, I'm both? sorry. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. I missed you, too. We'll cut, <laughs> we'll cut that together. It'll... Uh, it's only a 10-minute drive. I can get my tears out on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit. <laughs> Fix this all in post. Annie, please. Thank you. <laughs> in post. Do it in post. I'll do it in post. Uh, yeah, we both went on, we, we both went on like a little vacation. Mm-hmm. You had a birthday. Vac- Kevin's birthday was last mm-hmm. week. So everyone pause for a moment of silence for Kevin's birthday. I don't really think that's how you do that. Solemn I don't really think how you, that's how you do that. But mm-hmm. maybe they'll do it Maybe in, in your honor. That's really nice. Thanks for <laughs> pulling over or whatever. <laughs> pulling over. You all did. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you. For my birthday. And uh, yeah, so it's your birthday, which I'm excited to get into because I, I, I had like an inkling of what you were going to be doing, but I'd like the story. Okay. Um, but yeah, interestingly enough, we both went away for the weekend. You went with your family. I went without my family. Oh, uh, yeah. So there's we something to be said about both of those mm-hmm. situations, I believe. Two different ways. But here we are. But here we are. So it was your birthday. Uh-huh. Did you have a good birthday? I had a great birthday. We we went on a, we went up to St. Louis Obispo mm-hmm. and stayed at a hotel there and mm-hmm. uh, right on the right on the right on the water. Oh, beautiful. How about how long of a drive is that? It was, um, I mean, it was like three and change getting home, but it was faster it was like there. Two and a half, I think. Okay. There. It was two and a half felt like five. <laughs> it wasn't too bad, you're, but yeah. Are your kids, your kids are okay in the car? Yeah, they're pretty great for in the, the car. most part. Yeah. They can handle it pretty well. Yeah. My son is still, I mean, we talk about it a lot on the podcast. He's got that imagination that yeah. is vivid. Wild. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, which is so great. He'll play with the iPad for a while, and then we'll put the devices away, or maybe we started without. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And then he's just got his dinosaurs, and he's just—I mean, those things. Uh, it's just funny when he's playing with age. them in the car. Yeah, they just don't get old, man. He's just yeah, done doing that thing. Or just holding them at the side of the window, and uh, just like going, they're running, like they're running. Or <laughs> <laughs> Just you're like, all right, man, whatever. That's great. As long as you are distracted. Yeah, that's what a drive is. It's just distraction. Distraction, yeah. Do you guys play Car Rainbow? We don't play Car Rainbow. We like we got that from Bluey, but we played a lot, actually. Okay. Like on the way home from school and stuff. We played all the time. Oh, sweet. And it, Which is just find red, orange, mm-hmm. yellow, yeah. green, purple of, of a car. Purple car, orange car. Purple car is really hard to find. Spoiler alert. <laughs> is is it only allowed to be cars? Well, we kind of go into like like pickup trucks are fine, semi trucks are fine, stuff like that. Cars on the road you're driving around with. But like a purple flag's a no go. Correct. It has to be a car. Yeah, it's a car. Oh, all right. Car rainbow. So but it's a fun game to play with their kids. They're constantly looking at, you know, trying to find them. There's a lot of uh what my what my son and I call blurples. There's a lot of blurples out there where it's like such a deep, rich blue. You're thinking like, that's a purple. No, I think it's a blue car. Oh, but need man, this, that we looks. We need this game to end. But we need the game to end. So, and sometimes it's a good game to know. I mean, you go all the way home and you think, oh, we didn't find a purple one. Oh, well. I don't. But I, the kids are like disappointed, you know, that they didn't find a purple car. That we didn't complete Car Rainbow. But you th- it's like, hey, no. first of all, nobody buys purple cars. So <laughs> let's not stress out about it. I feel like you get stuck on orange a lot. Orange, I would probably say, is the second hardest one to find. Yeah, but you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised if you're once you're looking the for desperation it, is there. Yeah, you'd be surprised once you're looking for them. Mm-hmm. Actually, surprisingly enough, green is a little harder to spot than I would think. I would think green is all over. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Play car remember with your kids, but your kids enjoy the car. I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's all about distraction. It's all about distraction, and it went well. We got there. We had a really nice uh, hotel. We got talked into Uh-oh. an upgrade. <laughs> it was it was cheap. It was like 30 bucks. Okay. 30 bucks for an upgrade. Upgraded what? Your room? Yeah. Okay. So we were just like, sure. A family? Have a different kids now? <laughs> yeah. It was just we had somebody already in there. And they were like, <laughs> we have to pay you $30 to be with somebody else? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Are they They nice? were great. They watched the kids. <laughs> yeah. You had to have a date. 
Um, and it was like, it was one of those things where they like upgrade you and they go, well, it's the best. This is like one of, if not the best room in the hotel. And you're like, you don't have, it doesn't matter. I had to give you the $30. It doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, I'm just going to stress out about my kids uh, trashing the place anyway. They might have so been right. <laughs> it was an <laughs> incredible room. Uh, they were correct about that. But it was a lot of fun. And um, and then we yeah we traveled around and had dinner out. And we went to uh, the Madonna Inn. Which the is, Madonna Inn. Yeah. This is the thing that I was a little bit privy to. And I just saw some photos. But uh-huh. explain what the Madonna Inn is. It's a restaurant, yes. Yeah, it's a it's a giant building. It's a hotel. It's a restaurant. It's got a coffee shop, mm-hmm. merchandise. It's pretty popular. Never heard of it ever at all. Uh, no, it's no idea popular. what it was. Pretty popular with uh, Had someone else. No idea what it was. Um, <laughs> but it's. I think it's one of those things like people love hate, like because mm-hmm. some people are like I love it. I go every week, and then some people are like I don't get it. But you just go okay. in, and it's a very ornate, very pink uh, building inside. The outside looks like kind of like a Swedish cottage kind of feel to it. And then you get inside and you're like, whoa. Pink city? Population you? We all wore pink. But I didn't oh. know the inside was pink. <laughs> Should have figured it out. I just thought this was like a fun idea my wife had. So sure. the, everybody, she dressed everybody in pink. Uh-huh. Or t- had outfits for everybody uh-huh. in pink. Yeah. But you just thought. Are all my friends showing up in the same outfit as me or something? No, <laughs> I assumed it had something to do with the restaurant. I don't know why I didn't think, like, I bet the whole restaurant's pink. Yeah. But you just went in and, and uh, yeah, it was a, it was a, <laughs> it was a fun time. We had, <laughs> we, we had a server that my wife and I were really tickled with because she was so nervous the whole time and we couldn't have been more chill like we didn't what, se- we didn't send anything back we didn't say we didn't like anything so we just be clear just, like is the hotel re- like the hotel and the restaurant everything's pink like it's it all like that i mean there's some stuff that's not pink there's some uh, plenty of gold sure. okay <laughs> okay so i'm getting the uh, vibe of what this place is like now are you the only people dressed in pink no see we walked in and then the first person i saw Went to the merchandise shop and bought uh, one of everything. He had pink slippers and pink shorts and oh, yeah. pink Hawaiian shirt. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the most part, we were the only people dressed in pink. <laughs> <laughs> Just you and Peter Pink. Yep. No, that's fun. Well, maybe she was intimidated for that. <laughs> why was she intimidated? Or why was she, uh, you don't know. I don't know. It was just one of those funny things that you notice that you wa- you want to say something, but uh, I don't. Want to mm-hmm. say anything? But she just kept being like, "I forget what she did." But <laughs> it's one of those things. Like I can't resist as being a server for years of like gathering all the all the menus and handing it to her. And she was just like, oh, "Okay, well, you didn't have to do that." Okay. And then like I was like, "Oh, well, all right." And then this lady's on thin ice. My kids were like losing it by the end, so my wife took them, and there was live music, so they went and listened to that. So I'm by myself. Uh, uh, now you're and, Peter. And Pink. the server comes over, <laughs> and I was like, "Can I get the check?" And she's like, "Yeah." She gets the check, and as she's handed it to me, I've already got my credit card. So I just grab it real quick and just open it, scan it, make sure there's nothing on there by accident, whatever. Yeah. And as I'm scanning it, and I was like, "Okay," and she's like, "Oh, you can just take a minute with the." Okay, and I just like handed <laughs> it back to her. <laughs> this poor lady. I was like, "Hey, man, you got to get out of this gig. It's not working." What'd you guys order? I'm, let me guess. Salmon, mm. shrimp, strawberry lemonade. <laughs> you get where I'm going. Mm-hmm. Strawberry ice cream. What is there a strawberry lemonade? Oh, no. My wife's dreams were dashed because <laughs> that was when I think the the, the service. Steak, only rare. Steak, rare. <laughs> don't don't even cook the outside. I want to see pink. <laughs> Microwave it so it's cooked so it's on the inside. Pink um, slab of meat. <laughs> The, uh, I think that's what started with the server of getting anxious was, so there was a drink on the menu my wife saw and it was like a strawberry smoothie. Mm. So my wife's like, can we get two strawberry smoothies, please? Sure. And the lady was like, for the children? And she's like, "Uh uh-huh, that's correct. And she's like, it has alcohol in it. (laughs) You heard what I said, lady. We're trying to get them to go to bed early tonight. (laughs) It's my date night. (laughs) Just do it. Um, so we were like, oh, okay. And I think we ordered Shirley Temples. We adjusted. There you go. We made it happen. There you go. We made it happen. Yeah. 
Um, but no, we didn't order the salmon. Oh, <laughs> no, but it did get steak. Ah, uh, but it was a fun go. time. It was a fun time. It was a fun trip with the with the kids and the family. And then we also went to Barrel House Brewing. Barrel House Brewing. Yeah, you brought Barrel us House, a this where we thing, got you the you Galaxy beer. Cold IPA. And you said this is like a, a father owned uh, brewery. There was an article about how he's a dad. I don't know anything about him, but, but that's cool. Um, yeah, no, it, it tastes was, good. It was really cool. A really cool brewery. Um, we went there, and right away when we get there, a chicken shows up, as they do, and uh, one of the bartenders immediately starts pulling out a feed bag, feeding it, and then she takes my daughter and gives her a, a bag of feed. My daughter is just, that was it, and that was, made her day. That's what she wanted to do, yeah. That's what she wanted to do, was feed the chicken. Yeah, feed the chickens. Um, I, was still stuck are, in the, I was still stuck in the restaurant, and I'm thinking the chicken showed up. I hope that wasn't pink. Mm. I, my mind went somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> they spray painted it. Um, oh, oh, oh. It's just funny how bad kids are with animals because she yeah. gets this, you know, feed cup. She watched the bartender, not like kids just pick up social cue or visual cues, but, you know, she reaches in the bag, tosses the seed out towards the bird. Sure. And just keeps doing that. First thing my daughter does is like scoop up a handful and just is walking up to the chicken with a handful of seed. Mm-hmm. And chicken's like, get the fuck away from me. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on the ground. <laughs> they can eat out of your hand. That's disgusting. Put it on the floor. Yeah, put it on the ground. Okay. <laughs> what am I? What am I? Insane. But it was just funny. It just, just it took so much for me to have a million photo, fo- like photos and some video of my daughter just making this chicken retreat yeah. when all it's trying to do is eat. Let's rewind to uh, two or three weeks ago. We went to the farm. Uh, there's a place out here in, uh, outside of Los Angeles called Underwood Family Farms we go to for every fall. They have a big fall festival. Uh-huh. And we went into the petting zoo. And speaking of kids being around animals, and your son, who was like, <laughs> they have this like, so you go into where there's goats, little baby goats mm-hmm. and sheep. And they were fun. And then there's like a separate little area to go. And there's like huge, uh, they, they weren't bunny rabbits. They must have been hares or something different. They were yeah. gigantic. They sure. probably all weighed like five pounds a piece. I mean, they're huge. Yeah. And your son's like laying down trying to hug them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a friendly guy. A friendly guy, which I love. Yeah. I don't think the, the hares like hares it too hated much. It. Scared hares them out of their hated minds. Hated every second of yeah. it. Yeah. And then, and then I look over and he's like, they are, they're sitting in this like, roundabout thing and there's hay in there and your son's <laughs> just picking up piles of hay and covering the, mm-hmm. <laughs> the bunnies. Don't know why I did that uh, to warm him up. I don't know. It was plenty of warm day. It was great. And then he goes over to one, like squishes its face, like you cute little. Boy. He's like, dude, you're cute. I love your enthusiasm. You're gonna get bit in a second. Still didn't. He's still undefeated. I know. He's there's something about him. He's like the little. I don't know. Maybe he's some sort of whisperer. Mm, maybe. But it, yeah, kids and animals are so funny. I mean, it's like, you know, you guys have a dog. Correct. Of course. That's not like all animals, but the idea that I'm sure you've had conversations around them before. Please don't do that to the dog or the dog doesn't like that. Or what's nice is we are out of the um, children getting bit phase, which is nice. Uh, I'm talking about, about it on this. You're talking about it on this podcast. Well, you just, you know, he does the like back I, I, off. Yeah. I, the nip. I, I the don't nip. like that. Yeah. yeah. He's never bit the children, but he's done the sure. nip of just like, can you, I, ju- I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Knock it off. Yeah. I'm I don't like that. I'm just let me lay here looking as sad as I can. <laughs> <laughs> don't try to cheer me up. Because now the two of you have been brought into this. I had a cush life. Cush life. It was me and mom and dad. And then you two knuckleheads get brought into my life and I'm low on the pecking order. But hey, he's a, he's a happy dog now. But what was really fun about the um the trip that the kids loved was there was a place and this sounds so irrational because it kind of is. Again, we're right on the water. Yeah. Um, and we drove like a mile from our hotel. There is a playground there called Dinosaur Cave Park. Well. Hello. My my son. How did you ever pull your son away from there? Sign him right up. Um, and he was a real happy boy there. There was like yeah. a big egg that you could get. It, it was like a net. And then your dad just spun around. Then there was dinosaurs here and there. And dinosaur eggs you can climb in. He was having a he was having a time. It's next to um, cliffs. <laughs> Interesting. 
<laughs> Interesting location scout. Uh, um, Dinosaur Cave Park, if you want your kids <laughs> to go extinct. I mean, um, <laughs> It was weird. I mean, it was far enough away, but you were definitely just no, like, not for your son. No, he's he can he can move. He can motor if that's he's. Why, that's why we keep his his. Uh, he always wears pants one size too big. So if he really gets some distance, I mean, the pants will take him out. They'll just go down to his ankles <laughs> yeah, and knock sure. him just right down, <laughs> like a Batman bola. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, got you. What is um, it? Didn't even have to do anything. <laughs> I knew I could see you speeding up. I knew you were Thought done. Thought of it ahead of time. Um, but it was great. It was a great, uh, great vacation, great trip. Kids loved it. I love it. Now you, uh, left yeah. So your family. I left my family. So here, I'll say this. This is, uh, this is, this is mostly going to be a big shout out to my wife because um, it has to be. It better be. So <laughs> <laughs> she text, if I know it's good for me. She texted me to make yeah. sure tonight. You keep them in line on the podcast, please. Uh, yeah. So. It's been a tradition. We counted this year. We haven't gone for 15 years, but it's been 15 years since we started going. Mm -hmm. When I first moved to LA, a buddy of mine from Seattle area that I was close friends with was like, hey, we like, they had like a, like a bunch of their friends got married and like really close together. Mm -hmm. And they, so they all had like a joint bachelor party. They all went to Vegas and they had so much fun. They were like, we should, you know, do this again someday. This is back in 2008 that they were like, we should do like an anniversary thing. We should all go back and have like, we can go for March Madness and bet on basketball games and mm -hmm. all this stuff. So they invited me because I was new to Los Angeles and one of their friends lived here. I had just met him and they kind of invited me along. Fast forward to now, it's a thing we do once a year. We pivoted to going to watch football games. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's usually anywhere from eight to 12 of us probably. And it's just like a, it's just great. I see these guys like once a year. Yeah. Maybe twice because they most of them live in Washington state or a different state. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just fun. It's just to go see them and talk to them and hang out and make fun of each other and all that stuff. You sure. Know? Vegas trip with the boys. Yeah. Vegas. And it, what's funny is like, it's not the typical, um, it's not the typical, like we're going to go to Vegas and, but it's, it's fun to be able to take a drink outside, walk around, go see the strip. And just, here's the thing about Vegas. You go there and like, Go there and do the thing that you came to do because the rest of it can be a little depressing. Okay. <laughs> it's, anyway, so it's been once a year for a weekend. Mm -hmm. We go. Now with kids, it's a little harder, obviously, because then that kind of leaves the wifey alone with the kiddos. Sure does. So credit to her. She decided, well, I'm going to go north and see, see your dad for his birthday. Right. Which is cool. So she went on a little road trip herself with the kiddos. And she had it all done right. She had like, so you're, you know, like you're saying, you go on a road trip. Theirs was probably closer to six hours, six hour drive. Mm -hmm. So they did, I will admit, she did pick up the car bathroom, the car kids potty and put it in the back. Here it is. Here's the apology I've been waiting for. <laughs> I have been traveling with a toilet in my car. For over six Since I was 21. <laughs> before I had children. For emergency purposes, I have IBS. No, I don't. But um, yeah, and no apologies coming because I wasn't a part of it, so I'm not really sure how well it went. I'm, I'm sure it worked out really well for them because, especially, I can only imagine to dream come true. Okay, having yeah, driving with something your, that you can just pull over, pull over, get the job done, get the job done, get back on the keep road, moving. Not especially looking. when you're just one parent with two kids in the back. You gotta, you gotta figure it out. And then she got these like lap trays that had like marker slots and dry erase areas that a that a tablet could fit in the back. They could, I mean, it was like a whole like setup. So they were just all yeah. set up in their chairs with their like command center of entertainment. Smart, super smart. But she had a good time with the kids. You know, it's just one of those things where you know you, either of you take the responsibility when somebody's away. I mean, I, obviously, I know it's a lot, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I will say this. So. One thing I really did appreciate while we were out there is a lot of these guys know what I do now, what we do. We talk, we make parenting content, we have podcasts, yeah. we make, you know, we do all this stuff. And um, it was pretty cool. A lot of them had questions for me, especially now that we've been getting more popular and, and a lot of the things that we do and build and they were just asking questions about it. But a lot of that also bled into just conversations about our kids and mm -hmm. comfortable conversations about our kids. Yeah. Um, 
What's your kid like? What grade are they in again? Remind me. What's their, you know, how's the home life? What are they into? What is, oh, your kids are swearing now? What do they say? Like all that kind of, all that kind of really rich stuff. But I just loved the fact that it felt very normal to have all my guy friends talking about their kids, what their kids are like, you know, and like, and just their habits and, and their struggles. And one night we actually sat around at dinner going, what's the stupid dad thing you did? Hmm. Because they were the they were we were talking about the podcast and I was like we Kevin and I like love talking about the stupid thing you did which right. helps you learn as a parent but like what's the dumb dad thing you did and then we're like oh man then we sat around and oh man one time I did this and one time I did this and then you know it just it bleeds into like well one time I didn't know where my kids were for a half an hour and then fast forward into we were driving around the neighborhood looking for the six and seven and eight year old freaking out for a half really an hour. just stuff like that you know that they were fine. Everything was fine. They were just, were in a space they couldn't find them. I would hope so. But just, I don't know. You know, just as we got older, it was cool that like this was now like a normalized thing we were doing, talking about what I do. I'm just laughing about the fact that like (laughs) as if the story was going to end with, uh, yeah, never found them. Anyway, what's yours? (laughs) What's yours, Tim? (laughs) Why is everybody looking at me? Yeah. Again, the thing I just valued the most was like that we were all comfortable talking about our kids what it's like to be dads how's it going how's your kids going what's your relationship with your kids how's it going i mean it was just like man what a cool like leaf that feels like there's been turned in in terms of like societal like how it normally goes or typical dad relationships or like well i don't know my wife deals with it or you know like the the trope that's been going on for so long (laughs) it'd be nice to have one of those though like one of those there where it's just like come on i don't know guys i don't care (laughs) And they're like, why do we bring? <laughs> why are you why with da- us? Why is Dale here? <laughs> and then, as if I don't miss my kids enough when I'm away from them, I really truly do. I'm having fun with them and I'm trying to relax and I'm enjoying yeah. the time with them, but I do miss my kids. I miss my wife. You know, sure. it's just been like three days. But, you know, it's, come, it's fun to come back and say hello. Because I came back and my daughter, I was like, can I, g- <laughs> can I give you a hug? Honey, I haven't seen you in a couple of days. Mm, no. Nice. Yeah. It tracks. It's, uh, it tracks with her. Consistent. <laughs> Consistency is key. Consistency, if nothing else. When you're ready, I'll be right here. Yeah. My son gave me like five hugs. Mm-hmm. He said goodbye to me like six times when I left. He was really feeling it, mm-hmm. which is fit, totally fair. Um, And then, yeah, when I was leaving, she was like, Daddy... Emmett's going to miss you a lot. He's going to cry. And I was like, that's okay if he cries. <laughs> I'm going to miss him too. I'm going to miss you too, honey. And then my son asks her, are you going to miss daddy when he's gone? No. Yep. <laughs> Again, tracks. Very direct. She's right on the, she's right on the money. My kids are in the sweet spot in between. <laughs> uh, they'll give me a hug, hello, and goodbye. Gotta probably ask for it. So, depends where their headspace are. Sometimes yeah. they're like, dad. And then sometimes they're like, "Hi," and I'm like, "Have a hug." Like, oh, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's but funny, when I walk, sometimes the they're door, coloring or something, and it's right. like, "Well, I'm busy." Yeah, <laughs> just go. Yeah, it's not taffy. Let's not stretch it out. Just yeah. get out of here. Go. But yeah, sometimes when I leave, it's just like, "I'm gonna be gone. I won't be back till tomorrow," or you know, "I won't be back till you're in bed." And they're like, "Okay, great. Is yeah. that it? When have I ever understood the concept of time?" <laughs> Just go. It this doesn't. Is te- this is the test. An hour or a two days doesn't mean anything to me. It's all the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say that she said today she told me she did miss me mm-hmm. when I was gone. So that felt pretty good. Still didn't really get the hug, but she did tell me she missed me. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe on your deathbed. One can only hope, Kevin. <sighs> Unless it's contagious. We're all building up to a big moment, though, aren't we? <laughs> But yeah, it's funny. Two different, two different travel situations. Two Go different travel situations, kidding. but both with dumb dad moments. <sighs> I mean, would we have it any other way? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Um, we have, we had two of them. Um, one of them you had was two on the trip. What? No, one on the trip. Mm-hmm. One last week. Beautiful. Uh, the one last week. It's a dumb dad moment and a dumb mom moment because we're a team. And. <laughs> Actually, both of them are both are both of our faults, but I'm going to blame me more for the second one. But the first one, um, my daughter was saying that morning for school, she's like, I feel all, all she was saying was, 
she feels a little fuzzy. But it was coming off like she woke up in the middle of the night and she came into our bed, which she rarely does. Mm -hmm. Hardly ever. Uh, My son does it all the time. Need to talk to him about it. (laughs) I'll put a word in for you. Thanks. (laughs) Um, But between dinosaurs adventures sure it's not happening sure see these are two mom this is a mommy and daddy dinosaur yeah. and this is the this baby is dinosaur their cave and, and this is your cave um your, your cave stop coming in my cave <laughs> um so anyway so my daughter had come into our bed that night and you know because she doesn't sleep in our bed a lot it's like one of those things where you go did you have a bad night's sleep or is this all the time because the rolling around, the kicking, the sounds that they make. You're like, it's, it's probably normal, but it's <laughs> awful. Yeah. A little scary. The talking, the kicking. Just the kicking. The occasional teeth grinding. Could do without that. <laughs> I know that you're baby teeth, but you don't need to turn them into baby powder. I don't. Why? You, <laughs> this can't. I hope this isn't stress based because. <laughs> She only did it the once. She did it right before we woke up. I actually woke her up. Mm-hmm. It was like seven. She was just like rolling around, and then she ground her teeth, and I just went, all right, you're up. This yeah. is weird. <laughs> yeah. Before you sit up and your head spins around 360 yeah. degrees, can you please get up? <laughs> so she'd, she'd woken up, and, you know, she'd gotten dressed and, you know, got ready for school and got all of her stuff together, and she just kept saying, like, gosh, my head feels so fuzzy. And we were just like... You had a bad night's sleep, like, and you're getting older where, like, that affects you more, where, like, kids can get 20 minutes of sleep and then go for 14 hours or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, you know, you're like, oh, you're at that, you're start. you're getting older where a bad night's sleep is going <laughs> to ruin your day. And we were like, all right, well, go to school. And my wife did say, to my wife's credit, well, hey, here's the thing. If you're still not feeling great, just go to the school nurse and tell them, and you can come home. And she was like, okay. She gave her a hall pass. Yeah. So um, all you got to do, are you listening, (laughs) is go to the nurse and tell her, I don't feel good. And then you can come home. Mm -hmm. Copy that. That's all I heard. How long should I wait? Should I wait till the bell or? (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) So she waited a while. We actually got called at school gets out at 2.30. Got to call at 2. And it was. Yeah, again, she, yeah, again, right. No time management. <laughs> yeah, no time management. No no clock. Yeah, that didn't really benefit you that much. Clock management. You could have done it way earlier. And it was, it's funny because the school has different um, phone numbers. So I have like one or two of them down as the school. And then sure. like every once in a while, there's a third one I don't recognize. I remember I saw it and I looked at it. And I remember thinking, should I answer this? <sighs> Fine. And then I was like, hello. And I was like, this is Newcastle Elementary. I was like, well, I should have answered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the right, right. call. Anyway, they that was like, the same happened to me last year when I didn't go to early pickup, and then the teacher called me. She was like, "You should have been here at one twenty-five. It's one forty-five, mm-hmm. and have your son in the office." But there's that thing that we all do now when a phone number calls you and it's not saved in your phone. You're like, "Yeah, right." I know. What is that about our us that we're just like, "Ew!" Using the phone, the thing I carry around with well, me all the time. Well, it's the it's the it's the car insurance calls and the you know voter registration call, sure. all that kind of stuff calls where you're like oh, no just leave a message yeah um so the nurse called and they were like or the school called and they were like uh your daughter's been to the nurse twice um saying she's not feeling well she does not have a fever um but we're just thinking she's come twice now you should come get her and we're like oh okay so we came and got her what was really cool is they gave us two even though she had no fever they gave us two covid tests Oh, there you go. They weren't like you're required to do this because she had no fever in the school. Sure. They were like, we're not worried about COVID, but here you go in case you need to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, And sure enough, that evening, she started having a little bit of a fever and we gave her COVID test. It was all negative. She says one of those weird things, Uh, but it was just like, we did the same thing when she broke her arm. (laughs) Which was, she was like, I think I should go to the doctor. And we're like, you should just go to bed because you're not even, you're using your arm like normal and it's fine. And then the next morning she woke up and she was like, I don't think I'm going to school. I think I'm going to go to the doctor. And we said to her, why don't you go to school? And she went, I'm going to go to the doctor. Yeah. And we went, okay, we'll go to the doctor. Jeez. Okay. Well, here's the keys. 
Uh, let and us know did, when you get back. She did the same thing, and it's one of those things that my wife and I both kicked ourselves. We were like, all right, you know, we just got to, you know, I don't know, trust our children. You listen to them. Be the uh, <laughs> be everything we said we would be for them <laughs> that we refuse to be. Well, to be fair, when you get married, moment. you verbally basically sign an, an oath to each other in sickness and health, all this stuff. You don't do that with the kids. Just the kid comes out and you're like, all right, this is yours. Like, well, okay. Listen, I one, that's correct. Didn't, <laughs> didn't make a vow <laughs> in front of my family to my children. They just showed up one day. <laughs> um, I started eating all my stuff. With a, with a giant <laughs> goddamn medical bill for getting into it. Uh, <laughs> but it's one of those things where we tell them, like, listen, you know, you can trust us. You know, we'll do anything for you. Yeah. We'll be there for you. If you ever just don't even want to go to school, yeah, maybe we'll have a fun hooky day and we won't go to mm-hmm. school. Like, But so far you have not you done that. Safe. So far you have not, not done that. When it comes down to the moment <laughs> of me having my day or not having my day, I'm going to have my day. Uh, I'll be damned if you oh broke your arm or... <laughs> I'm a gentle parent until... <laughs> It ruins my schedule. And then I become negligent. a real boomer. Yeah. Negligent Neil over here. Yeah. <laughs> Go back. Unless it's hanging off your body, get back to school. Rub some dirt on it. Yep. I have a stuffy nose. That's in- Cram some dirt up there. It's incredibly unsanitary. Rub some dirt on it. Rub some dirt on it. The but- snot will make it a bit of a pasty <laughs> oh. stopper. <laughs> So that was the first one. The second one um, was we were going on that we were getting ready to go on the trip, and it was one of those things too where we we packed up. And the reason why I blame myself more is because my wife had packed up the bags, and um, I loaded up the car, and I'm usually more involved in like the checklist of like, do we have this? Do we have this? Do we mm-hmm. have this? And I was more concerned of like, all right, I'm going to go drop the dog off before we pack the car to the cause it had a dog hotel, dropped him off and doing this stuff. And I even remember at the last minute, and this is what should have triggered in me, something's wrong, um, was the last minute, I was just a little worried, I think, about my kids sleeping in a hotel. So I grabbed their, not really my oldest, but my youngest, my three-year-old, I was worried. So I grabbed their sound machine, which has like a nightlight on mm. it. And I was like, I'm just going to grab that just to like, who knows if it's like a room that has AC or we won't need it because we're by the water, but then it's going to be a quiet room. Will they not sleep? Whatever. So I grabbed that. That's what should have triggered me because that's what is always on my checklist. Was like, I have like sound machine on there or something. Anyway, we hit the road. We're traveling. Kids playing on their devices. We got, we, we at least were like, we have all the clothes we need, the shoes we need. Yeah, yeah. We had not, we packed exactly one uh, charger. <laughs> for everything you have? For everything. So my daughter brought her like Nintendo Switch. When that thing's dead, we'll see it when we get back. Because uh, we don't have a charger <laughs> for that at all. Uh, we both had our Apple Watches. Nope, when those die, goodbye forever. Um and we're just gonna rotate out the phones. Just we gotta, we gotta. But also, the iPad gotta stay on top of that. <laughs> and it was just this like <laughs> nightmare situation of just constantly rotating stuff and phones and almost dying. The iPad never made it. I mean, it would they'd play with it for five minutes and it would die. So then the the trip home was just not I great, mean, Bob. <laughs> I mean, I don't. We're just. Everything, rainbow everything. Just <laughs> find colors out the window and go wild. Let's play tree rainbow. Let's play sign rainbow. Let's oh, good, play... there's traffic. <laughs> yeah. Let's play red light rainbow. Just look straight ahead at the red lights. Yeah. Like dad is going to do with bags under That's his hilarious. <laughs> so you guys, so you, when you guys, so do you guys do, do you guys separate responsibilities in the sense that like, I need you to pack all of our stuff and I'll pack it in the car or do, do you pack your stuff you're going to bring? How does it, how does that work? My wife packs like 95% of the stuff. Um, she leaves, like she'll pack like my essentials, but then she's like, pack what you want uh, for this particular trip. She was like, I packed this, this, and this because I know what we're doing and where we're going. A lot of this trip was a surprise to me. Sure. 
like a lot of dads don't know where they're going or what they're doing all of the time. And this yeah. was one of the times I got you to really be that didn't. role for real, where I was just like got in the car and just like turned to her and was like, where to, miss? <laughs> 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 so I knew I was going to St. Louis Obispo, but I was like, I don't know what the hotel is. I don't know any, any of that. Anyway, but yeah, it's usually I, I pack the car up mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But usually I'm with her on the checklist. of just like, let's make sure we have this, this, and this. Because it all started with like, you got to get yourself a checklist on that notes app because especially when you have kids in diapers, like you don't, you got to have an essential checklist. You don't want to be, what do you mean? We don't have wipes. We don't have any. You don't have any wipes? Ah, I put them in the glove in, uh, 2003. Yeah. So um, they're dry. <laughs> it's a pack of dry paper. <laughs> it's just, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it just crumbles. It's just like, it looks like a, bottom of saltine bag yeah it's wild when you i get it it's like when you're packing i get overwhelmed with like i'm i what i'm gonna forget as opposed to just packing stuff Mm -hmm. and i i have to i'm maybe a lot of people do this but i have to like lay it out and see it before like i can't like um meaning all of it has to be in front of me and i see it and then i can put it all in the suitcase where i can't like go Okay, I think I've already I've already packed my shorts. I've already packed my underwear, socks. Oh no, we do that I as got, well. We lay out the clothes on the bed. Yeah, it's like I. But then I everything mean, in terms else of electronics, is just chuck it in stuff. bag. Oh yeah, electronics. Everything is like okay. I'm gonna have that. That's the charger. I'm gonna have this. That's the charger. I have to like see it. Oh no, that's no. My but my rule is I don't check it off the list unless it's in the car, mm. not that it's in a bag. It's got to be in the car. Mm. Then you can check it off. Mm, okay essentials because you can check off something and leave the bag uh, of course 100 percent. not gonna happen not on my watch except when you don't pack it at all not on my watch because i can't see my watch because my watch, I, died. watch died a long time mm-hmm. ago <laughs> didn't have it all weekend well I mean, we had it on the way there the steps <laughs> the amount of walking i did <laughs> unregistered steps my wife and i kept being like but we know we did it we yeah. walked a lot yeah and where does the, the where does the moral step counter lie inside of you? I've never had a moral exactly. Step counter. Yeah, it's on your watch, which had no battery. Had no battery. <laughs> but yeah, that was a pretty uh, dumb dad one. It, it could have gone worse. It could have been much worse. My son, of course, my son slept for a lot of the ride home. But I mean, I mean, he kept him and my so my daughter doesn't have a switch, and the iPad is toast mm-hmm. and. Our car's uh, charging, because I'm sure somebody's like, just charge it in the car. Well, the little charging thing is trash. I don't know what, I don't know. The what. USB ports. Horrible. Horrible. I mean. Tr- it, trickle it, trickle it, would be, a f- what, trickle would be. Uh, lovely. Lovely. I mean, right. it maintains the phone. And even then, don't do anything. Don't run more than one app. <laughs> so <laughs> certainly not an iPad is getting charged on that thing. So No. My daughter was doing that thing. Again, children don't understand time. Mm-hmm. Um, they just said to us, hey, can we play with the iPad? We didn't bring the charger. Uh, iPad's dead. We won't be able to play it until I mean, tomorrow because we're going to get home late. Okay. Half hour later. Is the iPad charged yet? I, when did I say that I was going to charge it? I didn't yeah. say any of it's that. It's not even. We're not, <laughs> it's not even. We're not even. We're not even. We're not at home. It's not. There's, we, uh, my watch is dead. Yeah. But I get to look smugly at all the other families driving by and going, no devices in this car. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. We don't use Mm -hmm. devices. Sorry. Family trap. Invested in each other. Although you really look. Here's my phone. You and your wife really look (laughs) really happy in the driver's seat there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And not stressed out at all. Grinding teeth. (laughs) Grinding teeth in the back of the car. Can you keep it down, please? We're trying to listen to a podcast up here. Mm -hmm. Your teeth grinding is getting uh, in the way of it. Um. At least they sleep in the car. That helps. And they can get, they can just fall asleep a little bit and then maintain the sleep. But you never know. I mean, they never just, maintain you never, the sleep. They never maintain the sleep. You're just kind of like hoping for maybe two hours. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get twelve minutes. Did you guys stop at drive-throughs? Do they eat in the car? Do you that kind of stuff? That was one of the last ditch things we did. We didn't do it on the way there, but on the way back, certainly. Do you guys want McDonald's? It's something to do with your hands and brain. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a toy that you're excited about before you take it out of the packaging yeah. and then never again? And I need you to trickle eat. So it takes a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. You give a, I'll give you a one we'll pass a fry back. Yeah. And I remember hearing a sound <laughs> of like, 
and my daughter going, I dropped my food. And I was like, "Mm mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, what is, is, if a car doesn't have a McDonald's French fry in it, is it really a family car? No. (laughs) No, it's not. And what's lovely about a McDonald's French fry you find in the car, you could find it when you get home. You could also find it eight months later. Mm -hmm. It'll still look exactly the same. There's going to be an article of like, in Egypt, they found the finger of a mummy from 65 B. Oh, nope, that's a McDonald's French fry. It's a McDonald's French fry. It's intact, too. It's from 98. They're going to be able to clone French fries. Yep. (laughs) When the potatoes go away. Yep. (laughs) Clone them. I'm not going to be mad at that because I love French fries a lot. Um,. Well, buddy, I it's like I said, it's good to see you. I good love, I you. love the. Um, I'm glad you had you guys had a good time. I had a great time for the most part. Pretty successful. It was very successful. It was a great yeah. trip. Uh, one of the one of the better ones. One of the best ones we had. Um, yeah. Thanks to the wife for setting all that up. That was great. I will admit, and I think I told her this. I was a little apprehensive at first when she's like, "We're going on a trip for your birthday," and I was like, "Great. Who's watching the kids? What do you mean they're coming?" I thought you said it was my birthday. <laughs> What's happening? Are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? But it was great. We had a great time. We had a great time with the kids. It was so fun. Loved it. You know, it's one of those things. I. It's so hard to travel with your kids. It's so much work. Uh-huh. I love doing it. Yeah. I really like taking them places and having them enjoy yeah, yeah. new things and look at new stuff. Whatever the case may be, but uh, I I really do enjoy it. There was one thing: if you're ever in that area, uh, Sensorio, I think is what it's called. It's like the Field of Lights. It's like an art installation. Mm-hmm. We went to it, and this will be the last thing, and we'll shut it down. Uh, but in San Luis Obispo, uh, in that area, Paso Robles, okay, and um, it's Field of Lights. You go there right at sunset. And it's just this half mile circle, half mile loop mm-hmm. of they have just this art installation. It's basically, it looks like little plants. It looks like a little stem with a ball on it. And there, <laughs> uh, and it has like a light and an LED and they all just change color. And just as the sun goes down, it just gets obviously brighter and brighter. Mm-hmm. And by the end, it's just this crazy rainbow field that's constantly like changing Almost like with like the oh, like rainbow with, field, like with the wind. Yeah, that was an easy game when you play it there. <laughs> Find the rainbow. It's all play. there. They're all there. But that was really, really, really fun. That was the big thing that we did. That was like, whoa, we were there for a while. It was really cool. That's great. Check it out. That's great. Hey, speaking of check it out, check us out on TikTok and Instagram at mm-hmm. Dumb uh, Dad Pod. That's a radio advertisement, <laughs> friend. <laughs> this is a voiceover class that's going. Yeah. And uh, you can, uh, here, listen, if you have a dumb parenting moment, we call them dumb dad moments, but listen, let's be honest, as parents, we make mistakes. We do it all. So if you get a dumb parenting moment you think is funny um, uh, to talk about later, we'd love to read them on the podcast. Send them mm-hmm. in to us. You can email us, dumbdadpod at gmail.com. Uh, you can DM us on Instagram. Plenty of people send them that way. Um, what am I missing, pal, before I send us off here? Uh, yeah, we're the Dumb Dads on YouTube. Mm-hmm. If you guys want to watch this full podcast in video form check us out there but we also have some uh longer form sketches and we have some other fun exciting stuff yeah lots of stuff on the the, uh Uh, on the horizon that should be it'll be going up on tiktok um some exclusive content also on youtube but uh thanks as always to at verdu on soundcloud for the the music our lovely intro and outro and thanks as always to my lovely wife annie for the birthday trip and also for editing this podcast there we go Things on the horizon. Now, lots of things on the horizon, including Halloween. That'll probably be the next podcast. Update on what we're doing. Is this your transition into a joke? Or? A little bit, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Because it's a season. Uh-huh. It's season, so I got a joke for you. Ready? Here it goes. Uh-huh. Why did the witch stay in a hotel? Why did the witch stay in the hotel? Mm-hmm. <sighs> she heard they had great broom service. Mm. So again, it's almost Halloween. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, bye. Kids pick (laughs) different costumes all the time. Which one are you going to be? Okay, we'll see you later. Okay, bye. Bye.
Welcome to the world, little one. Welcome to life. How do I stop this?